Welcome to The One Show with Matt Baker. And Alex Jones. Tonight's guest is a man of many faces. Yes, who can forget him as Brian Potter in Phoenix Nights. <laughs> Reality TV star <laughs> Geraldine. Peter <laughs> Kay as a snowman! <laughs> Tonight. Wow. Well, we have got some lovely stuff. Got a lovely thing about Winterfield, which we're going into. Winter in fuel. Fuel. Yeah, oh, that's nice. fuel. Yeah. But you were saying. <laughs> and, and as usual, could you burn me a disc of the VTs to kick? To of course. Keep? Thank you. You do love a good VT, don't you? I love the VTs on this program. Yeah. Personalised Christmas. About a lonely bird. Yeah, personalised Christmas cards. Yes, we have got. Have you got one about a lonely bird? Yeah. Yeah. The odds. yeah. And as you see, we've got a tree up. Yeah. They're lovely, that, isn't it? And Quite thinking, it's a bit common, though, I have to say. But, uh, a few people good. have said it's a bit tacky. for bit minute. tacky. Um, but you were saying this is your last day of work before Christmas. This is me like, don't say that. Everyone will be, there's people well, in a good, good way. That's <laughs> <laughs> booking. Let's put it this way. Have you got a tree up at home? Yeah, all I've got to get now are my bits. I saw you better get your bits, just your bits next. Everyone says that, I've just got to get me. What's your scheme? This? What colour scheme? Do you know what you're going for? We, co- we did it ourselves, our tree. We did it, we did it, yeah, yeah. And, and Susan's brother thought we'd done it professionally, but we did oh. it last Thursday. Yeah? Yeah, very well done. Yeah, yeah. Gold, we did, green. Go, go, uh, gold and red. Gold and nice. red. But we run out of... We've run out of decorations around the back. <laughs> so if you're on the front street, you can't see. We've yeah. run out of balls. We're going to need to do the front anyway. I'm putting it in yeah, the corner. Yeah, but if people are seeing it, it looks like we, we didn't get enough balls. They'd run out of the garden. So. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be having a chat uh, with Peter about the book that is more than just a book. It's a book book. Yeah, it's on. a coaster. Right. <laughs> schools closed in Scotland today because of the high winds, which oh, in some parts yeah. reached Peter over a hundred miles an hour. This is Helensborough. This that? is what? And that's Helensburg. fifty miles inland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's more snow on its way. Uh, this time, it's expected to fall as far south as Birmingham. Oh well, yeah. well, you know, they've got the end of the world, but you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but with the rising costs of heating bills, I think Rani has been to find out about a new scheme that can help those over 60 who are struggling to stay warm. 5.4 million people are currently living in fuel poverty in Britain. This is where a person spends more than 10% of their annual income on heating bills. I don't know whether it's because I get, I'm old, getting older and not being able to have the heating on as much as possible. But I do dread the winter. It was those fears that the winter fuel allowance was designed to reduce when it was introduced 14 years ago. The grant was £400 for over 80s and £250 for over 60s. That's now gone down to £300 and £200. But help is at hand in the form of a new charity, which enables those who can afford not to have their... So whether people want to donate their own allowance or they feel they need more money, then how can they get involved in this scheme? Well, first of all, I have to say there are lots of charities that help the elderly at this time of the year. There's Age UK, Friends of the Elderly, Independent Age. But also, if you feel there's somebody in your community or a relative that you're concerned about, go and help them out yourself. Just you know, be vigilant, be vigilant at this time of year. If you want to donate your Winterfield allowance to this particular campaign, you can go to their website. It's the Community Foundation's website. All the details of how to donate are there. If you're somebody who feels that you could do with a bit of extra cash, unfortunately, because it's just in its infancy, this particular campaign, they haven't got the manpower or the resources to deal with phone calls, but you can write to them. Okay, well, there'll be some people out there that are just too proud to ask for help, won't they? Yes, I mean, some people feel that, you know... People shouldn't be pressurised into donating their money if they don't want to. I mean, everybody's yeah. paid their taxes and everyone's entitled. But also, it shouldn't be confused with the cold payment, um, the cold weather payment. The cold weather payment. The cold weather payment, which is um, enti- people who are on benefits are entitled to it. If there's a forecast of seven days on the trot, of zero degrees or below, then you'll get an extra payment of £25 straight into your account. Yeah. Okay. Your dad, when you were young, had an interesting, uh, insulating tip, didn't he? No, with, yeah, uh, yeah. with cling film in your book, I was reading. Did you not do that when you were a kid? No. <laughs> you know, have the, in the mid seventies, you kind of put yeah. this uh, stuff around your door frames. Your mum used to make them snake draft excluders. Oh, yeah. I've got a yeah. snake oh, yes, draft excluder. 
And but he did with a hairdryer. He put cling film round the windows and he blew it with a hairdryer. <laughs> that was the second thing. I think he's, yeah. he couldn't afford double glazing. Right. It was the next best thing. It didn't work, actually. <laughs> but that's what they used to do. You know, we didn't all have central heating. No, it's true. No, no, no. Yeah. You see? No, that little analogy of your grub. No, if you have no hot water for your shower, you're all up, you're up in arms, aren't you, man? And if something breaks down with your boiler. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> when it comes to Christmas cards, there's nothing quite like the personal touch. And this week, Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Danny Alexander, poked fun at himself after being called a ginger rodent by uh, Labour rival Harriet Harman. There he is. Now, here's his festive offering. Lovely. Showing a red squirrel in the snow. And uh, it's Lucy Siegel's been finding out. Many of you also like to put your own stamp on your Christmas cards. This year, many of us will use the Christmas period to remind our nearest and dearest what we actually look like. Oh, I wonder who this is from. Oh, how lovely. Time was, it seemed, when only royalty, government and celebrities would dream of sending personalised Christmas cards. I'm here in Havant on the south coast of Hampshire to meet some families who like to give their Christmas cards that extra special personal touch. And I figured that what we'd do is we'll... Sarah and Simon have brought baby Hugo and little Jasmine to Rob Paul Photography Studios. Are you sort of secretly exhibitionist? Do you like everything? Okay, what well, I say now... This is going to get quite messy. When Sir Henry Cole invented the Christmas card in 1843, was this what he had in mind? Almost certainly not. But it is a lot of fun. Hey. Hello, Dave. Did you get it? Go. Brilliant. Lovely. You good? Yes, lovely. Yeah. A successful day for the appeals court. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Christmas card. There you go. Take the mistletoe if you want. There you go. Look at that on my cheek now. Right then. Lovely. Yes, sir. Oh, have you got a lipstick? There you've got that. Keep that. So on to your uh, book that's more than just a book book. The book that's more than just a book book. Why yeah. is it more than just a book book, Peter? Dunno. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a funny title. Yeah. yeah. Have you got it? It's hiding on the back. I was oh, reading right. it in the office. All oh, right, yeah. So that's that the tour that didn't tour tour? The tour that didn't tour tour, yeah. That's, that's okay. ended now. But yeah. now the book that is more than a book book? Yeah. Uh, and it's got loads of pictures in it. It's not pop up. I wish it had been pop up. You should have done it. Right. I just love a pop up book, really. Yeah. You could no, put one just inside the cover, couldn't you? No, know, it's just all... It's, you know, what you want we've got a... We've got a yeah, we've got a <laughs> There's, there, there go. you go. So there's you with your nan. 3D. Yeah. There you go. And, and what are you doing there, then? You're showing... Obviously, I'm what showing how to work Sky, which is right. an absolute nightmare, because we've gone digital now, and she's only just got used to pound shillings and pence. <laughs> and that's... we are showing how to work Sky, you see, telling yeah. you she can pause it, you see, and go for a wee or a cup of tea. She said, what about everybody else? Well, you're not controlling Britain. Proud of what you want there. That's that, you see. Okay, and then the next one, you go from comedian to oh, taxi driver. Oh, taxi driver. See, I don't drink me. I drink Bailey's, which is more of a dessert than a drink, I grant you. But I do end up dropping everyone else off when they've had a night out, you see. Who's that in your face? Well, you end up... So, Peter, can you get another one in? I'm like, I've got nine and I've got two in boots. I can't get any boots. <laughs> and then you end up with my wife's sister's cousin spread eagle off back seat with a foot against my face. It's all, all legitimate, like, you know. On we go. And, and on to, uh, to your exercise. Oh, yeah, and yeah. What's there going there on here, Peter? What's well, that's that? got... Uh, I did a Rosemary Connolly and I did it and she had you rolling around front room. I got it from charity shop. And, uh, and um, you're doing it. And then she says, now we've warmed up. And you're like, now we've warmed up, Rosemary. <laughs> Eject. Eject, Rosemary. <laughs> Sweating like Jeremy Clarkson here. Eh? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> ah, you can say that, because it's not a bit... No, you can say that. I can say that, that. yeah. yeah. Right. So what's next, then? You've done the book, this is a book book. Yeah. Is it a movie that's not a movie movie? No, no, I, I think there's just uh, I, I just enjoy Christmas well, and Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm just going to enjoy my Christmas, get me bits, yeah. and just have it. I don't know what I'm doing next. I've, okay. I've not got a clue. Right. Well, speaking of not this doing anything. This is the last booking. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, this but, is the last but booking. Speaking of not doing anything, uh, you say the art of throwing a sickie is on the decline. Let's have a look at oh, oh, yeah, no one does that anymore. You used to do that, Matt. It's a brilliant analogy. You can't throw any work sick here, that. can you? You can't. Well, well, as a farmer's son, you say you've got to be able to... Whatever you, however you you've got a choice you know, in the matter. The animals are relying now, on you, Pete. let's pretend you've rung into the office. Like Kelly when she did it on X Factor, she did a sick voice. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of them 24-hour things. That's what, that's 
<laughs> set your star like that. So next thing you're not Nubay with a bloody... Oh, sorry, I swore! With a, with a, a bowl of chicken soup and a Nubay. That's not really story. Anyway, and you also think there's too much choice in the world. Here's you in the middle of lots of cables. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, everything's on charge. I can't sleep at night in bedroom for green flashing lights in our house. It's like a spaceship landing. It's your whole life on charge. Yeah. Everything's on charge in our house. Everything's on charge. Is that your kitchen? No, that's just pretend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you've got a tough brush in the kitchen. It's all pretend, Alex. Oh, this Not is real. Yeah. I'm CGI. I'm at home now. This is green screen. <laughs> <laughs> and you've just finished your biggest comedy tour. That's done, yeah, that's all finished now. So, um, yeah. the biggest of hats off as a sign of respect. Yeah. The, yeah, massive tour, and I, I loved it. It was nice, yeah, it was good. Will there be another one? I don't think so, no. No? <laughs> well, okay. I've done it now. Well, that's it for you then. I, I don't know. I love stand up, I really enjoy it, but I, I just want to go on and do other things yeah. now. I don't know what exactly, but. Something that scares me. You should always do what frightens you. But that's the that's thing true. for you. I mean, you're flying a kite in this yeah. weather, probably. You've tried so many different some things. Pylons. <laughs> yeah. well, is it hard for you to think of the next thing that is coming? You know? uh, no, I've got some ideas, but I just want to have some time off now and be with my yeah. family and have a nice relax. Although I love the tour. I didn't come away from it feeling um, that I didn't want to do stand-up again. And, yeah. uh, you know, I've just move on and do other things. But I don't honestly do not know... What to do next? So, if you have any ideas, ring in. <laughs> well, Clean this... ones, obviously, you know, the sensible ones. <laughs> well, your book is bound to be a winner, and the book is out in the shops now. Yeah. Okay.